Good morning. And welcome to St. Michael the Archangel Parish. Today we celebrate the 17th Sunday of Ordinary Time. This Mass is offered for the repose of the souls of Maria Teresa Bayat Lane, Loga, and Peter Oka, and for Pro Oculo. Before we proceed, if you have a cell phone or another mobile device and you're not sure if it's on, please take this opportunity to turn it off or put it in some sort of silent mode. Thank you very much. So that we may worship as a community of friends and not strangers, let us all stand and while maintaining proper physical distancing, greet one another in the spirit of Christ.
O oh God, be protected of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is hope. Bestow in abundance your mercy upon us, and grant with you as our ruler and as our God, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and forever. Amen. My brothers and sisters, I want to thank every single one of you for helping us to make our celebration as, as safe as we possibly can by, of course, keeping ourselves social distance and wearing a mask. It's been brought to my attention that some take their masks off and on. I can appreciate that, and all of us can. It's a better necessity. But I do need to ask you please to keep your mask on in the proper way, which we know is to keep our noses and our mouths covered. And I promise you that when I come within six feet of you, I will be the same. So thank you all. A reading from the Book of Kings. The Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream at night. God said, Ask something of me and I will give it to you. Solomon answered, O Lord my God, you have made me, your servant, king to see, succeed my father David. But I am a mere youth, not knowing at all how to act. I serve you in the midst of the people whom you have chosen a people so vast that it cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding heart to judge your people and to distinguish right from wrong. For who is able to govern this vast people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon made this request. So God said to him, Because you have asked for this, not for a long life for yourself, nor for riches, nor for the life of your enemies, but for understanding so that you may know what is right. I do as you requested. I give you a heart so wise and understanding that there has never been anyone like you up to now. And after you, there will come no one to equal you. The word of the Lord. Amen. 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, we know that all things work for good for those who love God. We are called according to his purpose. For those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, so that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Lord, tell us what you Jesus said to his disciples, The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure buried in a field, which a person finds and hides again, and out of joy goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant searching for fine pearls. When he finds a pearl of great price, he goes and sells all that he has and buys it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net thrown into the sea, which collects fish of every kind. When it is full, they haul it ashore and sit down to put what is good into baskets. What is bad, they throw away. Thus, it will be at the end of the age the angel will go out and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace, where they will be weary and grinding teeth. Do you understand all these things? They answer, yes. And he replied, Then every scribe who has been instructed in the kingdom of heaven is like the head of a household who brings from the stone both the new and the old. The Gospel of the Lord. Amen. Amen.
am certain that what I want to speak to you about, what this Word of God reveals to me, has already occurred to, to many of you. I want to speak to you today on the theme of Stay on Jesus. Stay on Jesus. Yesterday afternoon, as I completed a portion of my preparation for breaking open this Word of God, I pushed myself back away from my desk and push my chair against the wall. For any of my family who might see this, there is a chair rail, so I did not back exactly against the wall. But the chair rail itself, there's evidence that I've done it many times before. While I was sitting there thinking, it came to my mind, stay on Jesus. And I went online, and I looked up to him. And I heard an arrangement of it that I had never heard before. This morning, when I came into the church, Scott was busy, as he always is, getting everything together. There are so many who do so much to make sure every Sunday, and particularly during these days of pandemic, that everything is prepared. Sometimes I even get to play a part in it. I did this morning because we received an email that said, is it possible for Father to sanitize his hands before giving out communion? I don't know why these messages don't come directly to me, but I did remember, and maybe that's why they don't come to me because I don't always remember, but I did put sanitizer on the altar. But aside from that, I saw Scott moving about, and I said to him, Scott, do you have a few minutes? And I would think that for Scott, that means, oh my God. But he said, sure, Father. So he came into my office, and he, I said, sit down. And I played for him this, I woke up this morning, and in my mind it was, stay on Jesus. At the conclusion, he said, now, Father, the day can begin. And that's how it should be for us every single day. That at the beginning of every day, we take the time to allow ourselves to fix our minds on Jesus. In the reading today from the book of Kings, we are told that the Lord comes to Song when in a dream at night. You know, sometimes that's the only time that God can get our attention. That's the only time that we are quiet enough for God to get in a word. And so, the word of the Lord comes to Solomon. But just as it came to Solomon, it's coming, coming, more fully and more fully, I hope, in this very moment, to you and to me. It is not night, and this is not a dream. In fact, wherever the Word of God is proclaimed, wherever the sacred mysteries are celebrated, wherever two or three are gathered in God's name, God is present. 
And so, just as he said to Solomon then, he says to you and me now, ask something of me, and I will give it to you. Ask something of me, and I will give it to you. I believe that every single one of us, of a certain age, has asked ourselves if there is, is there one single thing that if God would grant it to you, you would ask him for. Last week, I was speaking to a group, and a young man said to me that he had been sitting down with his friends and co-workers, and they had asked themselves this specific question. If you could have just one thing what would that one thing be? And of course, there was the usual litany of all the things that you and I in our histories have asked God for. When it came to him, he said, I want to see the face of God. And all of his friends kind of looked at him because it, you know, it's that look that you give someone when you, you think you've given the best answer and then someone says something that just blows your answer completely out of the water. And it, in it, there isn't this matter of, I wish I'd thought about that. As much as, as it is, it's absolutely right. That is what I should want more than anything else to see the face of God, to be in the kingdom of God. Here and now, considering all the things that you and I would ask of God, every single one of them that's good is offered to us in the kingdom of God. And so, brothers and sisters, this should be the goal of every single one of our prayers, to want to be with God. Now, Solomon answers with who he knows himself to be. He begins by saying to God, God, I'm made by you. God, I am your servant. God, you have made me king of a vast number of people. God, I'm young. And God, I don't have a clue as to what he's doing, as to what I'm doing. Today, you and I then join our prayers to Solomon. Because you and I say, give your servant an understanding heart to judge the people of God and to distinguish right from wrong. This really is our desire. We live in this world and who doesn't really want to know the difference between what's right and what's wrong and to make a right decision for everybody else? Wouldn't we like some certainty that when you and I make decisions, they are precisely in line with the wisdom of Almighty God? And so that's what, that's what Solomon asked for. And what does our God respond? Since you have not asked for something selfishly for yourself, I gladly give you an understanding heart. Why an understanding heart? Because for the people of Israel, every single thing emanates from their heart. The heart is the place where every single thing that's good resides. So God promises Solomon, and he promises brothers and sisters, to you and to me today that he will offer to us a good heart. Now Solomon, he went on and on doing the things that God was calling him to do with great wisdom, with great understanding, and with very, very good works. He built a temple. And after he built the temple, he built a house even for himself. He was blessed in so, 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 so many ways. But as it is sometimes for you and, the, and me in the midst of our blessings, 
tremendous blessings. There is always what I could say, and you can too, there's always that fly in the ointment. Just because of who we are. We can have the best of everything and we just want something else. And sometimes we want something else not because something else is better. Sometimes we want something else just because it's different. And so Solomon is convinced by his, his wives, and he has many wives, he has many concubines. He's convinced by them to try their God. And he tries their God. His heart changes, and he falls out of favor with God. Brothers and sisters, it cannot be that way with you and me. For you and for me, we must pray God for the grace to add our voices to the voice of a psalmist, to David. Lord, I love your commands. And I'm telling you, we cannot love the commands of the Lord all by ourselves. We can only love the commands of God if God gives us the grace to do it. But all, again, we have to do is ask. Ask God for the grace to love what he loves. It is here that the word of St. Paul speaks so beautifully to us today. What does it say? It reminds us that... We do not know what God has in store for every single one of us if we love God. We should pray then that no, no one thing, nothing, ever turns our hearts to follow other gods. It is because of this that St. Paul says, you know what? If you pray to love the law of God, an expression that we use all the time, St. Paul says, it's all good. How does he say this? Because we know that all things work for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. Love God. Respond to his purpose. He reveals his purpose. He reveals his purpose in teaching us about the mysteries of the kingdom of God, which are the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. And so, brothers and sisters, we come through this word in the book of Kings, through this understanding that St. Paul has says to us, if you follow this law and you know Jesus Christ, then everything is going to work for your good. And I know you and I are saying, well, look around. It certainly doesn't look like it. But it can if you and I are faithful. Because what is revealed to us today? Jesus Christ talks about the kingdom of heaven. It is right to desire the kingdom of God more than anything. But what do we know about this kingdom? We are told, first of all, it's a treasure. You think, right here, right now, what is it? What is your treasure? What is your treasure? My treasure? My treasure is my family. My treasure is every single one of you. To have such a knowledge of your value, of the treasure that you are, that I am willing to leave this pulpit and do whatever God tells me to do, to get rid of or to acquire whatever I need to acquire so that I can purchase this treasure, so this treasure can be mine. No matter what I need to divest myself of, no matter what I need to acquire, whatever it takes, whatever it takes, just to have the kingdom of heaven. Or we're told that the kingdom of heaven it's like a fine pearl. So then the question becomes, what do you value most in this life? What do we value most in this life? Right now, we're discovering how much we value good health. We're also discovering how much we value just simply being and being appreciated just because we are. 
But even the kingdom of God in Jesus Christ speaks of that. When it speaks about this net being thrown and people of every race, people, class, everything, everyone gathered into that net. That God excludes absolutely no one. This is what life in the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven is like. And so, brothers and sisters, if we realize this treasure that is offered to us in the kingdom of God, and we realize that there is going to be that day of judgment, then even now we should be praying about the kingdom of God. Let me tell you something about the kingdom of God. Most of us begin with the thinking of the thought, the kingdom of God is heaven. And heaven is at the end of my life here on earth. There is a measure of truth in that. But that's not the whole story, brothers and sisters. Because the kingdom of God has already broken into this age in the death of Jesus Christ. So what does that mean? It means, as you know, that in the kingdom of God there is no sickness. In the kingdom of God there are no tears. In the kingdom of God, you and I expect a perfect world. We know that the scriptures teach us to be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. And we rail against it. Brothers and sisters, this word of God is true. Absolutely. That if you and I pray for the kingdom of God, we're not just praying for it at the end of this life. We're praying that it will break into this world that you and I are living in right this moment. Brothers and sisters, Pray. Pray for the love of the Lord. Pray that he, in response to his asking us, what do we want? With his saying to us, ask for whatever. Pray when it comes to realizing that the kingdom of God is breaking into our area and all things are for good for, if we love him and are called according to his purpose. This is a word that's for now. God already present right here, right now. God filled with the power to do all things good. We cannot afford to spend this time of mass and social distancing wearing a mask over our hearts and our minds. We cannot afford to be socially distanced, distant from God. We must enter into this time knowing that only God can bring the kingdom into it. As you and I have seen, the world is completely opposed to this. But brothers and sisters, it is God that we're called to serve. So brothers and sisters, I encourage you, whether you woke up this morning or not with your mind fixed on Jesus, stay it on Jesus. Fix it. Stay it on Jesus. now stand to make our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father and the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God of God, light of light, true God from true God, begotten of God, not gain. Unsubstantial by the Father. Through him all things for me. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified and he punched his eye. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again from the dead. According to the scriptures,
church leaders, they may journey towards truth and clarity in their decisions and actions for the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, we are praying for our nation and world leaders, that they may pursue peace with justice in a world torn by injustice, violence, and war. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, for our parish, for more vocations to the priesthood, the diaconate, the consecrated single and married life, and for the intentions of all gathered here today, and those in our book of intercessions. For these, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for an end to this pandemic, for our homebound and dear parishioners, they may experience comfort and healing and support through the loving care of others. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for all those celebrating birthdays, anniversaries, and special remembrances this week, that God in His mercy will maintain a presence in their lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the faithful departed, that in their dying in Christ, may they share in his glorification with all the angels and saints. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Loving Father, please reveal to us the good of what is stored both old and new in our soul and our hearts. We pray that you will fill us with an abundance of your love and your wisdom, with understanding, love, and joy. We ask you now to hear and grant our prayers and our petitions. And all these things we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
my sisters and my brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be accepted by God, the Father of all my Accept, O Lord, we pray the offering, which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal lives through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. It is my God, Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and is just. It is truly right and just by reading our salvation. Always and everywhere we pass. For and holy Father, Almighty and Lord of God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end to the play. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in Christ. You are the Holy, holy O Lord, the fountain of all things. Make holy, therefore, his gifts to pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew. So that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. Similarly, when supper was in, he took the chalice and once more gave thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of you. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, the Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and his resurrection, we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks to your Elvis word in your presence and ministry to you. On the pray to partake of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church bread throughout the world. And bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Wilson, our Bishop, and clergy, and the entire people your Son is made for you. Remember also our brothers and our sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, your spouse, with the Blessed Apostle, St. Michael, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may bear to be co heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through them and in them and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor in your forever and ever.
to save this man, informed by divine teaching, he dared to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray for every people. Graciously grant peace in our world, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the heavenly blessing, the blessed hope, and the coming of our Savior. Save your apostles, peace I give you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and forever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always.
My Lord, my Lord, let us stand in prayer. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial for the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. St. Michael the Army, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God be you can be humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, pass into hell Satan, and all the evil spirits who wander about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. May the Lord be with you. And your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Celebration of the Thanks, God.